Uh, F and D is uh, basically a sketch comedy group. Um, it stands for our last names, Frank and then Degatano. Or so Felatio and Dogs. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but we just sort shortened it down to F and D, uh, and we kind of ran with that. So it started as uh, I mean, Aaron. Had, he we both grew up like. Messing around with video cameras and stuff. Aaron more than I I was, but when we started hanging out like middle school, that's what we did for fun was we made videos. And uh, long and short of it is, we made a we made like a we had a big project planned and it failed. So we just like decided to do just like short little dumb sketches. We went out and shot like just some stupid like one minute little thing, and we're like let's call it uh, an F and D film, Frank and Dago. And that, that, that is the genesis of like F&D, which is it was a short little sketch. It took like a, that big project to fail for us to like really like just realize that we were just pushing ourselves too hard and that we just needed to just make movies, you know? We were like just, we were so ambitious and we, you know, we wanted to go so big that we didn't realize like, you know, we had, you know, the ability to just do short sketches that our friends would like and that's you know, finally what it got us going. Which is, you know, the ambition wasn't a bad thing, it was just we, we learned quality over quantity. And I feel like with, with the short sketches, we, you know, we were able to like learn techniques and stuff with these little projects and kind of grow from there to make stuff that we actually, you know, we actually liked watching at the end of the day. And then, you know, after doing a bunch of those, now we've kind of built up, you know, our skills and moving on to bigger and better things. Don't do drugs or alcohol. I, it was, I actually uh, needed a place to live. I was living at home uh, sophomore year, my first semester, and I just couldn't stand that. So I wanted to go downtown, and I was friend. We had mutual friends, these girls, and I was like, "I need a place to live." And they were like, "Oh, we know these these super cool guys, Aaron and Vinny. They're just so much fun." And I was like, "Okay." And then so we were kind of just total strangers. Like I, I had really honestly never seen any videos or I've been to a couple parties that they had. And I don't really like them. They're, yeah, they were really like douchebaggish. Um, <laughs> and but uh, aside from that, I was like, okay, sure. Um, so I move in, and then just immediately, I think we all kind of clicked, or you know, we're just kind of on the same wavelength as far as comedy or just you know personality, conversation in general. Um, so from there, I don't know, we just started you know, collaborating more and more, and I kind of seep my way in more and more, <laughs> I guess, until uh, we kind of just all see eye to eye at this point, yeah. Yeah, Coop started, you know, I started helping us with videos, and he was giving us ideas and stuff, and like you said, we all just, we get along so well that, like, you know, we were accepting his ideas, and we soon learned that, like, Coop was, you know, he became as much as part of this as, you know, we are, so. I, they grew up in Cleveland. Um, <laughs> what I, is that? What is that? What? Never mind. See, tell represent. This is, you know, Cleveland. Um, <laughs> and then I'm from Chicago, uh, Oak Park, a western suburb of River Forest. Um, and I did film and video not until, like, my junior year of high school. And then I was like, this is way sweeter than anything I've ever done. So I want to keep doing this. So I kept pursuing that with friends at home, like J.P. Erickson. Shout out. <laughs> um, and uh, from there, just uh, I went to... Um, Columbia College in Chicago, which is a media art school and has the largest film program in the nation, I believe. Um, so that was definitely a place I felt welcome, you know, and safe as far as film went. And from there, it's just, you know, you meet the people you want to work with, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But obviously, I think uh, I met a couple, uh, a couple of keen guys. A couple of cute guys? A couple, couple of keen guys, friends. <laughs> Oh my god. What the hell is that? Bonnie, it's a joke. We play it on Alveters. It's just a prop arm. You fell for it hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chip, 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 chip. What's happening? Yeah. Trail, yeah. Rainbow trail. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -mm. Nah, this prison rules, bitch. There ain't no shortcuts. What the hell, dog? Yo, smoke his ass. I, a typical day, I mean, we, we try to get up, we, we try and like give ourselves like a 9 to 5 schedule, even though like, you know, sometimes we don't stick to the regiment, but we, you know, because Aaron and I, were not in school, so we don't have anyone telling us what to do, it's we have to tell ourselves to do it, and that's, you know, when you live at home, it's kind of hard because there's Xbox and TV and distractions, so we try and get up and we'll sit down and we'll think about, okay, what can we write today, or what can we start pre-production on, you know, what can we shoot this weekend. And then, you know, from there, the day just kind of, you know, unfolds itself, and we just work until about five, and then we play video games. It's also hard <laughs> because, like, we try to set hours for ourselves, like Vinny was saying, like, nine to five, but then, like, you know, sometimes we'll be editing until, like, two in the morning, so then that sets the next day off. So it's, like, really, you know, there's not, like, a set, you know, amount of time or hours that, you know, we work on projects. It's just kind of whenever we want to get stuff done that you know, when that happens. A little different for me, I'm in, I am in school, hiring my education um, to get a degree to graduate from uh, college. Um, I'm sorry. What are you trying to say? I just, I'm just saying, spitballing. Keep your degree out. <laughs> no, but it's like, you know, I'm in school, so there's a couple things, you know, it's, you know, I want to, number one, I would rather, you know, work with these guys than go to school, so... Occasionally there'll be a ditch class or two just you know to work on whatever project, but um Yeah, I try to you know keep a nice balance in between the both so it's I have a few more You know projects. I don't want to do in my hands, but you know, that's all right Well, this is I mean we've already uh, I've already uh, come out with this uh, We have we have two YouTube channels an F and D channel and then I started a channel like well, like a couple of years ago just I started making videos when I was bored and we called it it's that one kid 100 but it's like F and D extras and then it started it kind of has changed like first it was these dumb little sketches I was doing and then we started doing these daily uh, these vlogs called dailies and those were getting really popular what happened was this fell a couple days ago and got like a bend in it so like when you try to put the lid on the pot it doesn't sit flush so you can't like get the maximum steaming potential so now I'm just trying to bend it back with this guy and I don't really know how well it's gonna go whack it I mean I have like I think I'm pretty good handiwork I've done other things around the house I've showcased my handymanship I put up uh, the, the rod in my closet nah I think it sucks yeah you're pretty good with rods oh oh fuck yeah <laughs> The <laughs> Vin before he goes to sleep, because it scares off all the vampires in his closet. Don't forget the goblins under my bed. You hold I, it, I, I hit it. it. No, I got it. Look, back on. Does it work, really? Yeah, I fixed it. Damn, that was a lot easier than I thought. All right, you guys, we need a new daily. Do something funny. No, it doesn't work that way. Stop it, Coop. You're gonna hurt your noggin. <laughs> Come around to you. <laughs> Coop, your noggin is for learning. And it's like, you know, shorter ideas we have that we don't really think are like, you know, big enough for F&D. They're kind of like easier to shoot. And just, you know, basically a, 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 it's a place to experiment with stuff. So that's like kind of a big thing we're doing right now. We're spending all of February just like shooting and just getting a nice bank of stuff. So then like come March, we can release it all. And then kind of while that stuff's being released, we can work on more stuff. And this is also an opportunity to, you know, dabble in promotion because I don't think we've ever really done much with, uh, you know, promoting things as far as word of mouth, just on, you know, yeah, people on YouTube and comments. Mm -hmm. So we're talking to people to, you know, you know, this, this site we wanted to launch March 1st. Our D-list internet celebrity. That's what we like. I, I, I gotta be honest, sometimes, yeah, I do, and I feel douchey when I feel that way, but there was a time when uh, me and Jeff, we were driving across the country, and, or across the country, we were driving from here to Ohio, and, um, we stopped, and there were these two girls that were kind of like following. They kept like glancing over at us, and then I was like, "They're they're looking over here." I was like, and in back of my head, I was like, "I wonder if they recognize me." And then they come over, and then they ask for an autograph. So I'm not as big as a douche as I think I am, but you know. Well, well yeah, it's yeah. debatable. Yeah. Okay. Either time. way, so yeah, it's a little, it's there a little sometimes. It is, it's it is not... weird because once you get like confronted once, then it's always in the back of your mind. You can't help it. So if somebody's like eyeing you over from across the room, you can't help but think like, dude. You know, maybe they have seen a video or something, you know. 
you try not to be as pompous as possible, <laughs> but you're just like, well, maybe it's possible, you know? I, not as much. Um, I've Only a couple of times that happened to me, but always I'm with these two. And then most of the time it's like, it'll be like us three, and then like a girl will come up and be like, oh, F and D. And I'll be like, Aaron and Vinny, you guys are the coolest. And I'm just like, <laughs> and I just like turn around and I'm just like doing my own thing. And then they're like, oh, this is Cooper. Like, he's in videos too. And they're like, hi. Hey. And then <laughs> well, I've accepted it. But I did get um, someone, when you guys discovered, someone made a Best of Cooper on YouTube. So I got That's that right. going for me. That's, right. That's got like 100. <laughs> so you did it? <laughs> um, I, I guess, you know. We, we started, for us it was the right place, right time. We started putting videos on YouTube just as it was starting. I mean, it was already pretty big, but we started putting them on there when people were still, like, you know, when YouTube was still growing. So we kind of had a fan base beforehand, and and then from there it just grew. It was all word of mouth. And and to be honest, I mean, like, if you make good videos, I mean, people, it's word of mouth. It's a powerful thing. People will show up their friends, and then, you know, it's it, that's how it happened for us. So it, it works. Quality over quantity. You know, uh, in freshman year of high school we made a video that was we were trying to make a feature like the story didn't matter we just like wanted to get it at like an hour and a half as much goofy crap as we could put in an hour and it half. was te i mean it wasn't terrible you know we liked it just because it was with our friends but anybody else watching it it's it's nothing to them and that's the thing is you have to learn how to make cuts on your favorite pieces of work you know you have to you have to learn to cut out stuff not because you know, not because only it's too long, but just because maybe it doesn't, you don't need it, you know, like that's the one thing I kind of learned in film school is be prepared to cut your favorite scene, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's a must. And so, the, you know, we get sent a lot of videos from kids on online and always it's just like they're 10 to 15 minutes long and they always open with three minutes of credits that's every every job title in the movie industry <laughs> with their name under it, like executive producer, so-and-so, director of photography, you know, it's like, people don't, you're not, you're not a name yet. Nobody cares, like, that you did all this stuff, just, you know, back it up with a good movie and, and go from there, so, definitely quality over quantity. Uh, quantity over quality, I think, <laughs> so, yeah. um, but piggybacking that, yeah, quality over quantity, absolutely, but, I mean, you can't expect necessarily to, to put one video up on YouTube and be like, views, where are they? Like, you have to keep making, you know, films, of course, of the quality that you think is the best, but the more you put out there of good quality, the more response you're going to get. And, you know, going along with that, um, I think a very important part of it is to make the videos that you want to make. Because if you're making it for other people or what you think other people will think is funny, it's going to be less enjoyable and you're not going to want to keep doing it. And then it's just going to be a hassle trying to do a video rather than a privilege. So I think, you know, the, the main thing with us is um, we're in a good spot because we love making the videos we do and luckily so do other people. So, I mean, that's kind of the, the direction we're in. No, they're too hot. Oh, miss, here. can I get a plate of celery? Sure. Thank you. Celery? Are you serious? Do you want a side of tampons with that? <laughs> what do you got, a vagina? Right? <laughs> yeah, good one. No, seriously, miss, can we get a hardback edition of the notebook for this guy to read while he has his celery? <laughs> okay, joke's over. Who did you get? Celery? <laughs> hey, more like sell outery to gay side dishes, right? <laughs> Just like having something to munch on before the food comes. Okay, bro, we know you like to munch on, right? <laughs> what? Dicks, dude. Dicks, dude! Dicks, dude! Okay, yo, no. A lot of drugs. Sure. <laughs> um, no. Drugs and women. <laughs> um, I think the future holds for us pretty... I mean, what we're doing right now, I mean, I, I, I would hope so. I would hope that the 10 years from now, we're, you know, having another interview saying, I hope we're doing the same thing 10 years from now. You know, it's as long as we can keep making our own projects and hopefully one day funding them. Well, I mean, we fund them now, but like big, you know, big projects we'd like to be able to make and fund them ourselves. That's, you know, that's the goal. Yeah, just this on a bigger scale, really. I mean, to be able to probably just produce our own feature films, you know, just um, have control of as much as possible of our own movies. You know, that's from writing it to shooting it to editing it to producing it, getting it out there. And uh, kind of like Broken Lizard, you know, it's just like a group of guys. They write, they shoot, you know, it's just... Um, 
that's our overall goal is just the same thing but on a bigger scale I think yeah and then really just you know have the funds to maybe start like a production company and then you know take all the people who have helped us out whom yes. we can't really pay or you know except for beer or food um, and then be like all right now here's a here's a job yeah. do you want to work with us like we've been doing in college and then just more on a professional basis so just hiring our friends um, I think would be just the awesome the greatest yeah we got so many talented friends that like help us out you know acting I mean we've got people that are our DPs that like you know we can't afford to pay right now but I hope they realize that like when we do have the budget you know we do want to give them a paycheck to do what they love to do so hopefully down the road we can do that up in the land of ice and snow when the temperature drops to 40, 40 below, below who is the happiest is one up there, there. Percy the pale-faced polar bear, he'll sleep all day and then at night he'll catch a few fish by the pale moonlight. He never worries, he never cares, Percy the pale-faced polar bear. Then one night a hunter caught poor Percy by his snout. He growled and growled and growled and growled and he growled and he growled, but he couldn't get out growled. Now he's living in a zoo, but the funny thing is he likes it too, cause he met his girlfriend there. She loves Percy the pale-faced polar bear. Percy the pale-faced polar bear. Wink. Did you just make that up? No. No, no. You didn't really? No. Fuck, who oh, was man. That's really good. My uncle Ramus used to sing it to me.